still doing radical equations, all right? Same principles apply that we were doing the other day. Okay, the square root must be by itself on one side. It already is. So we can jump straight to getting rid of the square root by squaring both sides. Make sure you square both sides. Now, the examples we did on Thursday, uh, we were squaring a number on the other side. This time it's a variable. So we've got n squared is equal to 12n. When you square a square root, you're just left with what's under it. This is a quadratic equation. What must be true about quadratic equations before we solve? It's got to be equal to 0. So we need to subtract 12n from both sides. So we've got n squared minus 12n is equal to 0. Then, what do we always do? We factor, right? Well, this is not a trinomial. So our factoring here is going to be a GCF, right? They both have an n. Pull out an n. So we get n times n minus 12 is equal to 0. So we're potentially going to have two solutions here. Remember, anytime we run into quadratics, sometimes both solutions work. Sometimes one solution works. Sometimes neither one of them work. We have to check it, especially when our quadratic is involved. So if we plug 0 back into the original, uh, 0 is equal to the square root of 12 times 0. That's good. Okay, 12 times 0 is 0, square root of 0 is 0. That one checks out. Okay, we're good with 0. 12 also works. 12 times 12 is 144. Square root of 144 is 12. So we're good for both of those. Okay, both of those solutions work. Okay, <clears throat> let's do another one. Let's do the square root of 10 minus 3m is equal to m. The square root is by itself, so we're good. We can go ahead and square both sides. So we get 10 minus 3m is equal to m squared. It's a quadratic because we've got m squared. So everything needs to be, I'm going to move it, even though it requires moving two things, I'm going to move everything to the right side because m squared is positive on the right side. So I'm going to add 3m to move it, and I'm going to subtract 10 to move that term. To factor this one, that would be m plus 5 times m minus 2. So we've got m plus 5 is equal to 0, m minus 2 is equal to 0, so we get negative 5 and positive 2. So when we check those, when we plug in negative 5, we get 10 plus 15, which is 25, and the square root of 25 is positive 5. We can only consider the positive square roots here um, because we're considering these to be functions. So negative 5 gets thrown out. Let me show you. Uh, let me write that down instead of just saying it. Okay, That's supposed to be plugging in negative 5 into the original everywhere I see m. So that's the square root of 25. And what I was saying was we only consider the square root of 25 to be positive 5. So we're actually going to throw out negative 5 as a solution. If we plug in 2, 10 minus 6 is equal to 2. 10 minus 6 is 4. Square root of 4 is positive 2. So 2, m equals 2, is our only solution. Okay, m equals 2 is the only solution. So I know it's a little confusing because we try and emphasize when you take the square root, you got to consider the positive and the negative. However, um, we're considering this to be a function. So if we consider the positive and the negative, we're going to fail the vertical line test. So we got to pick one. We just pick the positive square root. Okay. Now, C. Answer, excuse me, example C here. Negative 2 is equal to negative B plus the square root of 4b minus 11. 
a little different. The square root is not isolated. Okay, it's got a negative b in front of it. So we need to begin by moving that b to the other side by adding it. So that is going to be b minus 2. Okay, we added the b, so the b is positive, but the 2 was already negative over there. Is equal to the square root of 4b minus 11. Then we square both sides. Now, squaring that left side is going to take a little bit more work than we've been doing because we typically only had a single term on that left side. Now we have a binomial. What do we have to do when we have a binomial squared? We've got to write it twice. Okay, b minus 2 squared is b minus 2 times b minus 2, and then that requires us to multiply it out. Double distribute, foil, box, whatever you call it, whatever method you use, uh, but you're going to get b squared minus 4b plus 4 is equal to 4b minus 11. Quadratic, got to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 4b from both sides and add 11 to both sides. b squared minus 8b plus 15. Let me go ahead and tell you guys, b should always factor. If it doesn't factor, then something went wrong in your process getting it to that point. So this is b minus 5 times b minus 3. 5 times 3 is 15, negative 5 plus negative 3 is negative 8. So we get b equals 5 and b equals 3. we got to check those. I'm just going to use my calculator for practice. I could do it by hand. But, uh, so negative b means we put a negative in front of that 5 plus the square root of 4 times 5 minus 11, that b was not negative. That gives us negative 2, so 5 is good. I'm going to go in and replace the 5 with a 3. And both of those check out. Okay, both of them work, so both of them are solutions. Okay, let's do one more like that because most people always forget to double distribute or foil when they have um, a binomial squared. So I'm going to do another example like that. The square root of 8 minus 8b is equal to b minus 3. The radical, the square root, is isolated. So step number 2, square both sides. 8 minus 8 B, and I'm going to keep writing it like this. I'm going to take the time to write out b minus 3 times b minus 3, and hopefully that will make some of y'all remember and not just write down b squared minus 9 or b squared plus 9 on your paper, because that's not what it is. All right? Double distribute, foil, box, whatever it takes, b squared minus 6b plus 9. It's a quadratic got to be equal to 0, so add the 8b to both sides, oops, that's my problem, and subtract 8 from both sides, 0 is equal to b squared plus 2b plus 1, I know that doesn't really look like it factors, but it does, b plus 1 times b plus 1. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So we get a repeated answer here. All right, b equals negative 1 is something that we call a repeated root or a repeated solution because we get it from two parts of the problem. Uh, that's just a little side note. Um, so when we plug in negative 1, 8 minus 8 times negative 1, we get 4, but negative 1 minus 3 is, oh, not negative 4, I don't know what you want, you hit the wrong button. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4, either way it gives us negative 4, so this one has no solution. 
Not every day. You can get a negative number as a solution. Uh, I don't think we had an example of one here, but you can get a negative number, but those are the ones that typically we should be more suspicious of. Uh, if you get a negative number, it can be the solution, but you definitely, definitely want to make sure that you check negative ones. Uh, now remember, this is for some techniques of solving equations, okay? Anytime you're asked to solve an equation, number one, if it's multiple choice, you have answer choices, you can plug in. That's obvious number one. Um, obvious number two is that you can always, a uh, strategy for solving an equation is always to graph it, okay? Even if you don't know uh, how to graph it by hand, you have this marvelous graphing calculator right there at your disposal. You can graph, um, you can graph it. Put the left side in Y1, put the right side in Y2. What are you looking for when you graph it? The intersection. Check it out. These don't intersect. Therefore, there is no solution. Okay. Now, let me, note, let me make a note that the reason why we got an answer, though, was if I put a negative in front of that square root, in, you know, to consider the positive and the negative square root, then they would intersect at negative 1. That's where the answer came from. Okay. That's why we got an answer when we solved it, but when you graph it, it's considering it to be a function, so it only considers the positive outputs. That's why they never intersect. But if you consider the negative, that's where you're going to get the answer that we got. Okay? So, ultimately, you should be able to get the answer. You may just not be able to show me how you got the answer to get full credit, but you should be able to get an answer is my point in going through all this. Anytime you have an equation, you can graph it and look for the intersection, or if you have answer choices, you can plug it in. Okay? Um, but you guys are going to show me now.